Hello everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm here with Novich Marketing Manager Aura Minigettel and uh, we're working behind the scenes today, uh, Aura is working behind the scenes today. I uh, just want to let you guys know that we had some uh, technical difficulties with recording last week and uh, luckily uh, Paul and from GoMeasure 3D was gracious enough to collaborate with us to re-record this for our attendees and registrants. Uh, so thank you Paul. Um, if you guys don't know who Paul is, Paul is going to be here today to talk about the MicroScribe Digitizer with Rhino 5. Um, so let's learn a bit, little bit more about Paul here. Paul Motley is an application engineer at GoMeasure 3D for approximately five years now. Uh, he's worked with CAD systems for about 15 years and Paul's first experience with CAD and CAM was initially through MasterCAM. Uh, currently, Paul works with digitizing hardware that have been interfaced with CAD tools. This varies from tactile digitizers such as the Microscribe to high precision white light and laser scanning digitizers. Uh, aside from his work with tools like SpaceClaim and SolidWorks, Paul worked extensively in the field of metrology. Uh, today's webinar presentation is about 40 minutes long and afterwards we'll have a brief Q&A. We'll answer the questions from last week's uh, Q&A on the air. So, um, the Novich webinar series is brought to you by Novich.com. As one of the largest online design software stores, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Uh, if you're interested in picking up a Microscribe 3D digitizer, the G2X 5 Degrees of Freedom is available in the United States, Mexico, and Canada from us at Novich with free shipping. Uh, to learn more about this product, I encourage you to call and speak with our sales specialist, Bob There, You can reach him by his email address, bob at Novich.com. Uh, and if you want to get a glimpse at what and who is changing the world of design one step at a time, please visit our Novich website, blog.novich.com. Uh, every week, we, our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. So if you want to learn more about that, check it out, blog.novich.com. And because Microscribe Digitizer is a rhinoceros-optimized tool, I invite you to visit rhinojungle.com. Novich's own online community for Rhino users, designers, and professionals to discuss the latest development and industry happenings join and visit us today. Uh, as a community manager, you can catch up on the headlines, uh, opportunities, and discussions with our weekly newsletter. So for more information, visit rhinojungle.com. Um, and after our brief July 4th break, uh, coming up next week, we uh, the recently released Rhino Gold 4.0 will be one of the most integrated solutions for CAD-based jewelry design on McNeil's Rhinoceros 3D. Uh, observe as Rafael Del Molino covers all the new tools and improvements, from the very initial design process to its render, uh, rendering, um, see what their top 10 tools are today. Uh, the webinar is free and will last about one hour, including the Q&A session. So if you want to check it out, head on over to knowledge.com forward slash webinar forward slash 78. By the way, uh, today's webinar is recorded, so if you re want to rewatch this and episode 77, 76 in its entirety, as always, you can find it on our Novich webinar series channel through Vimeo and YouTube. And with that said, Paul, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Kevin. Cool. All right. I'm going to make you the presenter right about now. All right. All right. So today what we'll be looking at is the Microscribe 3D Digitizing System. So the Microscribe 3D Digitizing System is a desktop portable CMM. And we'll talk about the different features of the Microscribe arms. So the microscopes come in five soft and six soft. That's five degrees of freedom and six degrees of freedom. Uh, what that means is that for our five degree of freedom arms, we have five separate encoders that we use to track the probe of the microscribe in three space. For the six soft arms, we have a sixth encoder on the stylus for attachment of things such as laser scanners and uh, other tracking devices to create more complex 3D data. We can also use that sixth uh, encoder for offset probes or uh, many other functions. The Microscribe comes in two models. We have the M series, which we're showing today, which is our higher accuracy system. And then we have the workhorse product, which is the G-Series arm. So today we'll be looking at the Microscribe in Rhino. And I'll go ahead and get our demonstrational block visible. So we'll be taking a look at the Microscribe system inside of Rhino. And we have a new innovative plug.
plug-in for Rhinoceros from where the creator, uh, the manufacturer of the Microscribe. So this plug-in looks very similar to the Rhino plug-in that we've seen in the past, but we have a few additional uh, features that have been added on. And another thing to take note of is the parent company, RevWare, is actively working on revision two, which will have uh, quite a few new features that I'm really excited about. We can't quite talk about yet, uh, but we're really looking forward to releasing. And they'll make this plug-in and the Microsoft with Rhino a much more powerful and much more easy to use system. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and give the demonstration with the tools we have available. So we have our alignment wizard, and then we have our probe calibration wizard. So we'll go ahead and walk through the alignment wizard. What the alignment wizard allows us to do is allows us to take our hand switch and probe our origin around our part. The reason we do this is we want to line our physical model up to the origin in our, our CAD environment, so inside of Rhino. So we give it an origin point. Then I'm going to give the software our X direction. And if you notice, as we go through this process, you can see that we have the ability to not only take a point, but we can do intersections of lines, circles, and parallel lines. So while we're doing a fairly basic alignment right now, we can make this alignment procedure as complicated as we so desire, just depending upon what our needs are when we're using the system. So we'll go ahead and finish that off. And what we'll do is I'll go ahead and start collecting some points. Now, if you notice, we have our point here on the screen. And as I bring the probe of the microscribe to that origin point that we created, you can see that, that point is sitting right there. And as we move off in our X, uh, in our X direction, we see the point shift in X, and we move in Y, we can see that point shift in Y. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And what we'll do is we'll just start taking some points on the top surface of this model. So what we have here is we have an organic surface that we want to better understand. So we're going to create a 3D model of this organic top surface on our part. Okay. So if we rotate this around, you can see that I've begun to create an organic surface. Um, so we can take this and we can create an interpolated curve around the outside of these points, which we'll do right now. And then once we've done this, we can transform these points and this curve into a usable surface. very 
simple and easy to come in and create organic surfaces using the microscribe with Rhino. The next thing that we can do is we can come in and build out a solid boss. So instead of dealing with organic theory, when we want to do reverse engineering on more of a mechanical level. So at that point, instead of dealing with 3D points, we can shift this directly to dealing with 2D points. So the way we do that is we'll still sketch in 3D, uh, but we'll be working on our 2D plane. And there's actually a few different methods. I'll go ahead and go through one first, and then we'll move to the next method here in just a few moments. So what I'm doing right now is I'm coming in and I'm simply gathering points at the bottom of our part. And we use these points to create a curve that we can then extrude off. All right, so we can see that we've created a uh, curve, but we can't use this as a 2D curve yet. And the reason why is because it's actually not 2D. We can see that we've created quite a bit of variation in this curve. So what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll transform it to our C plane. And we'll delete off the original one. And now you can see we have a flat 2D curve that we can manipulate however we want to. So we want to turn this into hard features, so arcs and lines, as opposed to the spline that we have. We can do that. Uh, and we can treat this just like any other curve that we would inside of Rhino. Um, but for now, we'll just go ahead and turn this into a solid boss. So select it and we'll extrude the plant curve. And what you'll notice is that as I grab the microscribe, you can see that we can go up and down on our part. So we'll just select the height that we want to extrude this to, press our input button. And now we have a solid 3D model that we can work with. Uh, so we can take this model and then transform our seaplane and continue constructing as uh, we so desire to build off the rest of this part and do a full reverse engineering job. So let's take a look at these two methods that we've covered. We have using points to create an organic surface. And then we have the ability to create our solid 3D model or our solid object under that 3D surface. And so we want to stitch these two together, create a full model. We can do it that way. There's many different ways to reverse engineer. It just depends upon your preference. But the microscribe gives you a very quick and easy way to come in and gather the data that you require for creating your model. So the next thing that I want to show is the ability to reverse engineer in a little bit more controlled manner. So these first two have been dealing with uh, 3D curves that we manipulate somehow to create either a organic surface or a solid model. And the problem with these 3D curves is, especially in the first instance, where we translate that data, we can create some sort of error. Say, you know, on this particular part we have here, there is a draft angle. So as we move up and down that part, we're actually shifting in and out. So we need to be careful when dealing with something like this to 
ideally we'd like to take a point at the exact same plane every single time. Well, that's something that's easily doable using the digitized planar intersection curve function. So to use this function, we simply set up a plane. So right now I'm going to set up a plane on the side of the part. Then we give a start axis and an ending axis. And I give the number of planes that I want in between there. So now every time we trip across a plane, if you notice, I'm going to hold down my trigger button. And as I move across the part, as we trip across the plane, we create a point. So this is very helpful when we're wanting to gather information, but we want this to be strictly 2D information. You know, we don't want to have to worry about translating that 2D information and then it getting uh, shifted in the data not being accurate. So we can see that all these points are taken in a very 2D manner, so then we can uh, translate them however we want to. to. In this manner, we can create a loss of surface through here, or say we just wanted to understand a 2D shape, so then we can build out a profile and uh, do something with that profile. This gives us a very solid and easy to use way of creating accurate 2D data. Uh, so these three different methods are just user preference and also it depends upon your end goals of what you're wanting to do with your project. You know, whether you're doing reverse engineering or as we'll see in a moment, you can actually do some basic inspection with the microscribe. It really just depends upon the methodology and what your end goal is. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the ability to use the microscribe for inspection inside of a rhino. Uh, so we don't have a huge uh, ability inside a rhino to do inspection, but we do have a few basic tools that we can use the microscribe for to perform some tasks that otherwise we'd have to use a very expensive 3D inspection software to do. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at this point cloud that we created uh, and compare it to this surface. So we have these both of these, this point cloud and the surface aligned up on our origin. So we know they're in the correct location. And now we're going to come in and just do a comparison to see how close they really are to one another. So we'll analyze using a point set deviation. I'm going to select my points. And I'll just select the surface. And now we can see we have a color map on our object. And we can see we have our whisker hair scale set to 10 times. So wherever a point shifts out 10, uh, wherever a point shifts out of the part, the whisker above it will be magnified 10 times so we can get an idea of how far different areas are out. Uh, so as we look across this surface, we can see that it's fairly close. Uh, we just have a few outliers here and there. So this is one very helpful tool to be able to take the microscribe and do some basic inspection. So say you have a part that you went ahead and did a reverse engineering project on. You sent the part out to your guys to have it manufactured. Then you bring it back in. And now you want to see how close the manufacturing process was to creating your physical model. Well, you can do that and then uh, get your comparison here in real time. So that is the ability to do inspection. We also have quite a few other tools in here. Um, these are just the highlights. Um, but we have quite a few ways to measure length and distance and whatnot. Um, but those are the basics of using the microscribe inside of Rhino. The other thing to make note of is the microscribe is essentially a 3D mouse. So because it's a 3D 
mouse, we can use any function we want to inside of Rhino. We can come in and say we want to create a cylinder. Well, let's create a three-point cylinder. And we'll just do this out in space. And as you can see, I grabbed a function that was not in my Microsoft toolbar. It was just in the basic Rhino toolbar. And we can come over here, create three points, and then extrude out a cylinder. So we have the ability to come in and create a cylinder, say, I want to create a box. And just do a corner corner height box. We can come in and create our box. Um, we want to come in and create curves. You know, maybe we just want to do a single line. We can do that. <laughs> Don't fat finger the keyboard. So we can come in and create lines, lines, arcs. Uh, really, it's just limited to your imagination as to what you want to do, uh, what tools you want to use with the Microsoft. So any mouse input on the a graphical interface of the screen can be uh, translated using the microscribe. So you really have a full freedom as far as using any of the tools that you want to inside of Rhinoceros. Uh, that covers the uh, basics of the microscribe uh, for this webinar. And I believe, Kevin, we have a few questions that we'll go over. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, let's, so let's start up with the first question we have here. This is from uh, Steve. He wants to know if there is a way where you can convert a G model digitizer to an M model. Okay. Um, yes, there is no way to convert a G model digitizer into an M model. Uh, what we recommend doing is you can exchange them out. Uh, so if you want a M-series arm, we can uh, give you a trade-in cost or a trade-in value for your old arm, and that's how we usually handle uh, guys who are wanting to upgrade their GPU to M's. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, all right, so I noticed this is from uh, Matthias. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, I noticed you were working in inches. Is the microscribe sensitive enough to pick up surface details uh, in millimeters or tens of a tough millimeter? Uh, could you repeat the question one more time, Kevin? Oh, uh, Matthias is curious uh, if um, if the digitizer is able to work in inches, um, uh, beyond inches, actually. Is the microscribe sensitive enough to pick up surface details in millimeters or tens of a millimeter? Okay, sure. Yeah, the, the microscribe is a very accurate system. The MX series is accurate to two thousandths of an inch, and then the G series is accurate to approximately nine to twelve thousandths of an inch, uh, which equates out to uh, the M series microscribe can capture information accurate to fifty microns. Uh, which would be 50 thousandths of a millimeter. And then the uh, G series is going to be up in, I'm doing this on the fly, but I believe it's close to 400 microns. Uh, so that's going to be closer to 4 tenths of a millimeter. Uh, but still, that is some very accurate information. Uh, and depending upon what you're wanting to do, you can choose between the M series and G series to get that type of resolution. And accuracy. Cool. Um, and I, I think uh, Tim, for example, he, he wasn't too clear on uh, the digitizing panel. Um, are you using a plug-in or just a 3D digitizing panel in Rhinoceros 5? Okay, yeah, this is our, this is very similar to the 3D digitizing panel inside of Rhinoceros, um, but we have a few added features. So it, it is actually a plug-in from RevWorks. And the plugin includes a few different options. One is the alignment wizard, and the other one is the probe calibration uh, wizard, which allows us to come in and uh, calibrate specific probes. It's a very nice function to have inside of Rhino, and it comes with every new version of the Microscribe. Um, curiously, do you know where? Um, Curiously, do you know where uh, our users and attendees will be able to get this and download this plug? 
uh, and it will be available on our website. Cool. All right. Uh, Basil wants to know if the red arms work with the upgraded. The old 3DX arms do work with the system. Um, they do not work with USB computers, though. Uh, you, I know if you guys have been able to get it to work, it's just not very reliable. Uh, the rule of thumb is if you can get a serial, you can get five serial USB converters. One of them may work. Um, so. It'll work inside of Rhino 5, but it won't necessarily work inside of the newer model computer as we start to see serial fade off more and more. Um, so it is a recommendation to go ahead and get a upgrade with your old 3DX to a G series arm, um, mainly because once your 3DX starts to have issues, if you send it in, it will be mandatory for it to, before anyone, or before Revware will service the arm, they need it to be upgraded to a G-Series. So it is recommended that you go ahead and do that upgrade. Cool. All right, so moving on to our last question. Cool. All right. So moving on to our last question, which looks like the most technical one. Uh, this is from Ted. Uh, he's wondering, in a parametric situation, does Microscribe compensate for the stylus tip radii? Uh, for example, creating whole feature versus a boss feature would have outside versus inside of offsets. Uh, or does one have the to offset, offset that circle after the fact? Okay. Uh, that's a great... <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the plug-in, as of right now, does not have probe offsets built into it. Um, we do have the TIP uh, calibration system. So the, the TIP calibration wizard allows us to adjust where the center point is on our probe and allows us to create and use new probes. Um, but it doesn't do offsets on the fly. So we still do have to uh, do the offset manually. I have gone in and created scripts before to handle that offsetting, which is fairly simplistic to do. Um, and if anyone has further questions about that, feel free to contact me and we can talk through it as far as how to go in and do the probe offsets. But there is good news in the light of all that. I will go ahead and say that the newest revision for this plugin will have probe offsets. Uh, and they, this plugin is being heavily worked on as we speak to be ready to go and to be very uh, efficient and usable. We have a lot of really nice new features that I'm looking forward to, uh, probe offsets being one. Uh, and also, there's a few other things that we can't quite talk about yet, uh, but it's really exciting. So in this particular version, no, we can't do probe offsets. There are a few workarounds, um, but if you give it a month or two, you will see a very impressive new plugin come out that will have that capability. Cool, Paul. Sounds very exciting. Cool, Paul. Sounds very exciting. Um, that pretty much sums up our uh, Q&A session. Um, Paul, if you don't mind, I will transition back to me as the presenter. Sure. Cool. So let me know if you guys can see my screen here. How's that look? Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> Well, um, okay. So I want, first of all, I want to thank Paul for joining us again um, in our second re-recording. Um, so, uh, Paul, thank you. For, and on behalf of Go Mission 3D, um, yeah. So it's really awesome. Thank you for joining us today. So, um, yeah. From the Novich team, thank you attendees for being patient with us with this re-recording. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this, um, find this very useful, and go and pick out, pick up a Microscribe digitizer. <laughs> uh, so the uh, Novich webinar series is brought to you by Novich. Um, 
you know, uh, so if you're interested in picking up a Microsoft 3D digitizer, the G2X 5 Degrees of Freedom is available in the United States, Mexico, and Canada from us at NovaEdge with free shipping. Uh, so if you want to learn more about this product, I encourage you all to call and speak with our sales specialist, Bob Thayer. You can reach him by his email address, bob at novaedge.com. And to get a glimpse at what and who is changing the world of design one step at a time, please visit our NovaEdge website, blog. .com. Every week, our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. So if you guys are interested, please check it out. And because uh, the digitizer, Microscribe Digitizer, is a rhinoceros-optimized tool, I invite you all to visit rhinojungle.com. This is our online community for rhino users, designers, and professionals. So if you join us, um, you'll also get a weekly newsletter with a breakdown of what's going on in terms of job opportunities, events, training courses, and also... Um, uh, the latest industry headlines. So check it out there. Um, and after our July 4th break, uh, in our next upcoming webinar, uh, we'll be with talking with uh, Rafael Del Molino of TDM Solutions, who's going to get us familiar with the, the latest Rhino Gold 4.0. Um, if you want to learn more about this webinar, upcoming webinar, head on over to novich.com forward slash webinar forward slash 78. If you guys have any questions, comments, uh, or feedback, feel free to contact um, Bob at Novich.com or myself, Kevin, at Novich.com. And if you missed this, uh, this webinar is currently being recorded. So if you want to rewatch this, check out Vimeo.com slash Novich and YouTube.com slash Novich. And hopefully we will have the webinar up by the end of the day. On behalf of the team, on behalf of Paul, uh, Paul, do you have any last words before we sign off on this webinar here? Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. And I uh, look forward to any questions or comments that you may have. That's right. So if you guys have any questions, email Paul at GoMeasure3D.com. Yeah, so check us out on Facebook and join us in the conversation. Like and subscribe at our Twitter page at NoVeg.